Hey, welcome back to Mobility Project. One of the things we want to start laying out for you is some of the theory behind the movement mobility approach. One of those key concepts is called the one joint rule. One joint rule. And basically, that when I look at all athletes moving, I want to try to treat athletic movement as a rigid column that we shouldn't see any local extension. So no local flexion or extension in the spine. What do I mean by local? I mean that the only place I want to see flexion and extension is at the hip and at the shoulder. And when you start thinking about this in these terms, it becomes very simple. In fact, what ends up happening is that it gives me a, a really simple way to start to break down complex movement and that if I'm seeing an athlete load, we want to try to load the hip. We know this and we want to try to treat the spine as a single unit. Hip, spine, and that's like deadlifting. So watch your finger there. If uh, Imagine the bench gymnastics rings. How stupid is this sport? So easy that I all I have to do is get really stiff and then be strong enough to move my shoulders around. And now you get the, basically the same analog of like a stiff like a deadlift. Any break is a loss in position. So when we start to see athletes moving, I don't want to see any local flexion or extension. And people confuse this. When I say overextended, I'm not talking about global movement. I'm talking about having a local break right in the middle of the back. Again, that's not happening. So if I'm having flexion or extension of the hip, I should only see flexion or extension happening around a single joint. The second I see this start to happen, it's like I have five different hip joints. And this is a local extension fault. And you'll see this when people unwrap, is that as they go to start to break, instead of pressing back, remember, we're not talking about the fact that we squeeze our butts, we get tight, bracing into position with the two-hand rule, but what I should not see is the athlete suddenly unlocked. And now that's just created all of these other hip joints I have to manage, and I'm having a local extension fault. This can also happen at the top, that if I, you see me start to press, poop, and I tilt, that's a local extension fault right in the middle of the spine. As I pull, I'm trying to keep rib cage down. As I press, I'm trying to keep rib cage down to try to minimize the number of spinal movements under load, especially if they're happening at one or two segments, one or two vertebral segments. And so when we see athletes like this, we talked about the deadlift ordering yesterday. If all of a sudden I'm loading, you see, or if I have one section break, I'm only having one or two kind of sections break, local extension faults or flexion faults. That's where I'm going to see destruction. That's where I'm giving away a lot of force. So I was working on the phone today with an athlete. We're talking over at squatting. Arms up, active, tight, stable position. What is happening is that the athlete was getting into keeping the torso upright, but initiating all of this by overextending the low back. What happens as soon as I've lost this pelvic position, I can no longer control the hip. I can't get down very well. I, this ends up being very loose. Knees come in. And I'm not going to be able to control that extra rotation, maintaining those solid positions, unless I have a stable, neutral, rigid pelvis. So it's all the best lifters in the world are going to be straight up and down in these good positions. The second I over tilt to get back up, boom, I've lost congruency, I've lost mechanics, knees come in, it's a disaster. And more importantly, I can't create any stability. So if I'm going to solve this problem, think about your overhead squat, I got to do what Dan John says, sink right between my feet into that bottom position. What I don't want to be doing is overextending into that stripper back because strippers are dirty. So don't end up sticking that butt back looking for that extension. That's one of the faults we know where athletes are looking for tension in their hamstrings instead of trying to create stability in the hip. This violates the one joint rule. No local flexion or extension in the spine under big loads. I'll see you guys tomorrow.